All right, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Galaxy Beacon. I am Matt. I am Carly. And I am Rob. Continuing to be Rob, <laughs> as ever. And today we're actually going to uh, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Rather than doing kind of a concept or a review or something like that, we are going to nail down and we are going to talk about a character, one specific character, whose story is, um, at this point, probably done. Um, I don't think we're going to see anything more of her past The Last Jedi. Uh, but we are going to talk about the one, the only, Captain Phasma. Um, Carly, take us somewhere. Um, well, we meet Phasma in Force Awakens, and a lot of people were kind of disturbed by how little we got of her on screen and how easily she gives into Finn. Um, I was the only person that I know who championed the fact that she was not done there and that the fact that she gave Starkiller Base over to Finn was character development in and of itself, to which you, Matt, <laughs> told me I was reading far too much into the story. And guess what? It ended up being a major part of her character because she actually is just founded on this idea of just constantly betraying people to survive. Yes, I remember this conversation pretty well. Uh, I remember I was I was seeing like no, I mean she's just kind of like a minor side character, like whatever, like she just did because who cares? Like she probably won't even be a big deal. Like like she's either gonna get a lot of development in Last Jedi and be an actual character, or I, I thought, or you know she's just gonna be kind of a footnote. Um, but then no, it turns out that you were one hundred percent correct <laughs> that the fact that she so easily gave up Star Killer in order to save her skin is really emblematic of of what we would come to know as her character. She is someone who will do whatever it takes to survive. And the the very next thing we got, you know, that took place after Force Awakens in regards to Phasma, the uh the the short comic, it it was exactly that. It was her blaming lowering the shields on someone else and then going down and hunting them down and killing them. And then being like, yeah, I don't know, that was crazy that that guy let down the shield. It's a good thing I, I killed that traitor because, man, that, that what a traitor that guy was. <laughs> like, I mean, that's basically what that comment was. Yeah. Um, he did nothing wrong. <laughs> as, as much as someone on the side of the First Order can do nothing wrong. Hey, he did that's no another description. He did nothing. Hey, it's in the name, as, as they point out in the, in the first Phasma book. First Order. First Order. Order. They exactly. will get around to doing other good stuff, but right now they're just trying to establish order. Yeah. Second <laughs> culture. I don't. I, I don't know where you go once you establish order, maybe, but that maybe is. Maybe we'll see. Maybe that'll be in episode nine. But they wanted to make sure, you know, their constitution. First thing, psh, order. Yes. <laughs> um. So Phasma is interesting because Phasma is a character who was really heavily marketed in the lead up to Force Awakens, and then turned out to, at least in the context of the film, not be much, really. And I've often likened her to um, the EU version of Boba Fett, which is this character who looks really awesome, um, seems really cool, but when you just look at what they do in the movies, they don't really do much. They, they kind of are there, they look cool, they have a couple cool lines, and then they die. Um, but... In, in EU continuity, we then went on to show that Boba Fett was super interesting and, and, and had all these adventures. And so Phasma's kind of the same to me. She's really awesome looking, great design. Doesn't do much in the um, actual movies, but when you look at her novel and her comic, I mean, she's, she's a great character. Um, mm -hmm. Carly, talk to me about Phasma. <laughs> Did I not already do that? Talk to um... me about what you like about Phasma. Well, Phasma is a complicated relationship I have there. <laughs> I love to hate Phasma. Like, I, some days I just adore her. About the time the Phasma novel came out, I was just enraptured by how much I hated her as a person and what an awful person she was. I've kind of come back around and just love her again now. Um, I just, she's a uniquely terrible person to me because we see everything about her backstory she doesn't have a tragic backstory. Everything tragic that has ever happened to her, she created. Like, she killed her own parents um, to, like, basically help her and her brother come into, like, a better situation. Um, which seems nice until she betrays and then later kills her own brother 
to get herself into a better situation, um, including actually like to get like basically when she goes with Brendel, she takes her niece with her into the First Order, and in order to protect her own identity, she ends up killing her child niece yep. so that no one has ever seen her without her mask. And that's pretty messed up, but that's Phasma. I mean, she's... Uh, and, she, and when she did meet Brendel, they mm-hmm. were, of course, there was the Claw Clan had already gotten to Brendel's downed escape pod. Yes. And... Uh, the Claw Clan is like, uh, you, you know, you shouldn't be here. No, she breaks all you're, their, you're like, broken rules a, a and thing, everything. And she's like, okay, um, you know, well, you guys weren't going to tell us about this, so it makes it okay. And yeah. they're like, we were going to tell you. And like, sure you were. Um, well, it doesn't matter because you're in violation of the treaty now. And they're like, well, what can we do to keep the treaty? And they're like, well, give us, uh, I was like, like some special person in your tribe. And she's like, okay, let's shake on it. Yes. They go to do the shake and she's like, Stab. No, they wanted Frey. They wanted her niece. They wanted the it child. Was, it was the niece that they yes. were going to end up killing anyway. Yes. Well, Phasma, to be fair, didn't kill Frey until she was in the First Order and Frey was being trained as a stormtrooper. And later Phasma was like, to, you know to what? To be fair. Because yeah. being fair is very important right now. Yes, let's be fair to <laughs> no, Phasma. I'm just saying, she didn't like turn around and kill Frey. Like, this was after a new set of, like... A lot of had, a lot of had gone on between yes. these points, but this it, it's was a interesting later decision. that. But yes, it's interesting that because you can make the yeah. argument that she killed him because the only other option was to give up her niece. Yes, but you can't make that but argument. That's clearly not really run. even what was happening in that moment. Though, no. like she just does things. <laughs> she just does things to get the most for herself because she knew her warriors could beat the other tribe. So what was the point of trying to keep peace? She already didn't agree with her brother, for trying to make peace with these people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Phasma, she has pretty much killed off anyone who's seen her with the mask off, for the most part. I mean, Brendel's dead. Cardinal's most likely dead. Uh, everyone we knew from her past is most no, likely as dead. As far as we know, everyone who has ever seen her with the mask off is dead. Did Armitage never see her with the? No, because no, she had not the, as far she as had, we know. She was wearing a storm. And Armitage has never asked or anything yeah. like that's. Um, I really their relationship is something interesting too. And it's just, just it's just emblematic because that makes it so much easier because the fact that no one in the First Order has seen her face, if she needs to, she can disappear like that. You know, mm-hmm. she's just making it so that way, no matter what, she. I mean, can she's get still away. like the tallest woman in the galaxy. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> she's six, like five, I think. Um, she's yeah. She's taller than Kylo Ren canonically, um, even though Gwendolyn Christie is not as tall as Adam Driver. Captain Phasma is taller than Kylo Ren. She is a giant. Yeah. <laughs> she thinks she's gonna use. Uh, I mean, there's still great questions if she survived that fall or not. If she does survive the fall, mm-hmm. do you think she, she might just lose the the outfit and just kind of oh yeah, if she show up as someone fall, else? I would be surprised if she sought out the first order again, especially if it's the type of situation where maybe she doesn't wake up right away and she's kind of in a situation where she wakes up in the middle of the war between the first order and the resistance, sees that maybe the first order isn't winning now, and just decides, you know what, I'm gonna become queen of whatever little region I'm living in. Like, yeah, right I could see her doing that. Well, cause, I mean. She, She's still a fantastic warrior. Yes, it doesn't yes. matter. It's I mean, just that's it's what so so see. self-centered. Yeah, cuz we see in the little Phasma comic when she's chasing down Rivis because she chases him down because he's the only person who accesses the record and knows that Phasma is the one who lowered the shields to Starkiller base. So it's also interesting to me that he runs after that point because he knows that because he has just seen this information, he is dead. Like, it's within the First Order, you already know that, because she has such a reputation. Um, Because he didn't have to run. If he didn't think that this was going to be a problem, he wouldn't have. But he accessed this information, saw that Captain Phasma had been the one to lower the shields, and knew that once she found that out, she was going to come after him. And so he ran. Yeah, he takes off. He gets out of there. Um, And with good reason. We were talking about this in a previous video, about redemption a redeemability of a character. Mm-hmm. Phasma she, Darth Lord. Vader of, <laughs> at all. Phasma has none. No, she has nothing. Because well, with someone like Darth Vader, he has that he was doing it for his wife. Yes. Um, and and also the trauma with his mother. Mm-hmm. You have Re- um, Kylo, who yes. has sort of the betrayal, but also the 
the idea that you know he has natural inborn yeah, power. Just this you kind of force ha- that we don't understand. Right. So you, you, you feel if you have more. it, you have to even do some Armitage Hux like is a horrible evil person. But we know a lot about his child life. We know about Brindle. We know how horrible his father was. He's never known another life. Mm-hmm. Um. So like you could even argue that like the decisions he's making today are just from everything he's learned his entire life, he never really had an opportunity to turn away from this life because this is all he's ever known. Phasma has, like, nothing. Like, her parents dying was her. Her brother dying was her. Betraying all of her people was her. (laughs) Like, Um, she's had the opportunity to go into power several times, and she takes it, and then, like, she... Like, Brendel brought her here, but he also kind of stepped on her toes by destroying parts of her planet that she apparently did care about on some level because then she hates Brendel Hux and wants to kill it. Well, that's what's interesting to me about Phasma is, you know, exactly like you're saying, there's nothing there's nothing there that's as clearly potentially redemption material as you have for most of the other characters. And even with someone like Hux, who's probably too far gone, he yes. does have that, that very real uh, horrifying childhood. Um, but with Phasma, we get... Maybe a couple moments where we understand there is there's a there's a feeling person under there. You know, we have the moment where um, it's it's really well handled in the novel. In the comic, it's where, where, especially good. But yeah, yeah. When, talk about the novel. When first. Brendel is destroying her home planet, I love the way the novel handles it because she's wearing a stormtrooper outfit at that point. Mm-hmm. We don't really know what she's. The novel leaves it ambiguous as to what she could be feeling in that moment Mm -hmm. to a degree, uh, which is really interesting to me. Uh, Like, I just really like her. I think she's, she's interesting. I I don't like her as a person, but as a character, she's really fascinating. And then in the comic, when she's climbing up the, uh, climbing up the cliffs with, uh, with the TIE pilot that she brings along with her to hunt down the, uh, to hunt down the, the officer, she has a moment where she has a flashback to uh, to Siv and, and Freya um, and the other guy. Torben. Torben. Um, and she, she she actually calls out Siv's name um, and the, the Tai Pai is just like, who are you, who are you talking to? Um, so there's clearly a level of, I don't even yeah. know if I would say it's guilt, but there's something there. I mean, there. even in Internal that same demons. comic, like yeah. she starts kind of viewing this Thai pilot as like a surrogate Siv. Yeah. Um, we see, like, she calls her that on accident once. Um, she reviews, like, she looks at her kind of fondly a couple times. Um, and then the ultimate, like, climax of the comic is that they find where Rivis is hiding. And she tells the TIE pilot to wait where she is. Then Phasma goes to confront Rivis, and the TIE pilot, like, is just like, okay, well, I'm gonna go, like, see what's going on. So the TIE pilot goes and witnesses Rivis basically accusing Phasma of... Lowering the shields of Starkiller Base. Um, so the TIE pilot is just, like, freaking out and runs back to exactly where she left. Um, but when Phasma returns, the TIE pilot can't really control her facial expression. And Phasma can tell that she knows something. And, like, you can tell that Phasma didn't want to kill this woman. But she's going to. Yep. Because and, uh, she knows too much. And, you know, let's... Uh, let's I don't want to spend too much time on it because it's not canon. But let's do talk about the deleted scene, which is the alternate death for Phasma. You know, Phasma's death in Last Jedi as it stands was... It was the fall. Yes. We won't call call it it the the death. We don't know for sure. It was fine. It was a thing that happens. Um, But I really... (laughs) Falling. Falling into a flaming pit that's high enough to kill anyone, even I mean, in armor. Sorry, go yeah. continue. Thank continue. you. But um, <laughs> but no, I uh, there's a deleted scene where uh, she has Finn flanked by stormtroopers, and Finn essentially is like, oh, you know, how is the first order? How are your troops gonna feel when they find out that you lowered the shields? Um, and like they have this moment where the stormtroopers kind of look at each other, mm-hmm. and they're just like, is he is he like telling the truth? Um, and then Phasma quickly, one, two, you know, one, two, three, four, shoots them all out. And then in that moment, that's when Finn is able to get sort of a distraction and get the upper hand. Um, and that was a really cool moment that really does dig more into Phasma. Um, that's really consistent with what we've seen. Again, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it because it was cut, but I really like that scene. And, uh, you know, maybe they got rid of it because it was slightly more definitive because she gets shot in the chest with like a giant blaster cannon yeah. so like maybe i mean that's possible that like 
they, they want to leave it ambiguous. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, that that does bring back something. Uh, Finn and uh, Finn and Phasma, they're kind of foils. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Now that Phasma is apparently out of the picture, Finn can create his own little storyline separate of Phasma. But it's interesting. Both of them in the first movie are traitors. You know, Finn le- didn't do his job on Jakku. Mm-hmm. Left the First Order. And then when she, he comes back then uh, to Starkiller Base, obviously Phasma ends up doing the exact same basic thing. Save myself and don't no, do I my think, job. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously differences and mm-hmm. there's moral differences because they were doing it for different reasons. But initially, Finn was just doing it to save his neck. Mm-hmm. No, I think, um, and before The Awakening especially... There's a lot of evidence that, like, Phasma thought that Finn was special. That she, like, really felt a kinship with Finn. She wanted him to do really well. She spent extra time, like, coaching him where she necessarily didn't other stormtroopers. Um, she thought that he was kind of like her. Like, it's pretty clear that she thought that he was special and he was going to be, like, the next big thing. Um, maybe be a captain one day himself. Um, she believed that there was a big future for Finn. So when he turns on the First Order, it's kind of like a bigger slap in the face to her than if it had been any other Stormtrooper. Um, it feels like, anyway. like Because he is the only one who does it, so we can't say for sure, but her interactions with his squadron like directly and Before the Awakening just feel much more personal. than Because it's only four people that she is spending a lot of time with. And you don't really get the sense that she can do this one-on-one with every single squadron. It's just that this particular FN squadron is the best of the best. Right. She thinks that they're going to be really special. And Finn is someone that, you know, in the, in the cut scene, mm-hmm. he can be forceful of his words. He yes. does know how to talk to the stormtroopers. He does... No, he's a great leader he's in a Before great the leader. Awakening. Like, Specifically when he's the of leader, them. Yeah, when he's the leader of the squadron, he does a fantastic job, but he displays things that Phasma is trying to quell. Like, during their opening simulation in Before the Awakening, um, they're going through a simulation where... Finn is essentially trying to get all of his troop out safe on the other side, but one of his troop members is lagging behind, and it's actually the one who dies in the opening of Force Awakens, um, mm-hmm. Slip. But Finn won't let the others push through and kind of finish the simulation because Slip is falling behind and, like, is in danger. Um, so he goes back for Slip, and after the simulation is over, Hux and Phasma are actually both watching the whole thing, and Hux is like, that was great, everyone ended up well on the outside and Phasma's just like no that was terrible because he went back for the weak trooper like he shouldn't have done that he should have gotten like the strong ones out and continued um and Hux is more or less just like okay well I guess fix it then do you think Finn in the next movie might use those leadership skills specifically of stormtroopers to maybe create an internal revolution. I would revolution. love to see I Finn start be like a rebellion because he is the one person who can speak to stormtroopers in a way that they will be able to understand. Yep. Like anyone else on the outside preaching to them about how the first order is bad, they're not going to listen to because they've only heard like the first order's propaganda their entire lives. Um, Finn has seen both sides and he knows like the good things in the First Order's propaganda that have been kind of perverted. Um, And he can really twist that for them in a way that they can understand and maybe follow him. And if they do follow up with that in the new movie and Mm -hmm. do use it for that, which I I hope they do, because that traitor scene in Force Awakens is a nice setup because it shows how it personally affected that trooper. Mm -hmm. And you don't think of stormtroopers having personal feelings like that. That they were supposed to be uh, anonymous... So that when one falls, you don't care. There were other scenes that were cut from Last Jedi that would have given us a little bit more of that as well. Like the elevator scene where one of the stormtroopers recognizes Finn. And it's just like, oh, you made it to, you know, officer or whatever. Awesome. Like scenes like that that could have potentially humanized uh, the rank and file stormtroopers to pave the way for a revolution from the inside type story. But leaving those scenes out, you... They did leave enough of those little hints 
in. Yeah, I don't think it completely negates the idea of a rebellion. It just doesn't necessarily point directly toward one. Sure, but Um, it would be fantastic to see. And I mean, I think it would make leaving those other scenes out, which could have been the emotional payoff. Instead, if 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 it's used well in nine, I, I I will forgive them leaving those scenes out. And and you know, speaking of the way. That, you know, speaking of the Phasma novel a little bit, because I, I mean, the Phasma novel is one of my favorite of the, uh, of the current crop of novels. I mm-hmm. really like the Phasma novel a lot. And um, you kind of, through Cardinal, get to see what probably the average stormtrooper thinks of the First Order. Because um, Cardinal is very clear when he's talking to V. Marathi, he's, you know, we are rescuing people from places that where they have no future. We're bringing them up and we're giving them homes and you know phasma comes from a place like that she comes from uh parnassus which is a a a planet that has been completely annihilated essentially by its own you know devices you know this was a planet that Mm -hmm. essentially screwed itself over um because of large uh plants that that i i don't i mean the planet didn't do anything it was corporations came in like under a government that was insufficient to control corporations yeah um and allowed the corporations to pollute the environment so badly and then just abandon them so it's essentially just like a wasteland planet that corporations created and the new republic never stepped in to super fun do anything about it star wars universe yeah like the new republic just didn't and for all we know, the Empire also didn't do anything, but the way Brindle Hux frames it, at least, we know the New Republic didn't. Exactly. Because um, Brindle Hux frames it as an issue that the First Order would act on, that he wouldn't let people live on planets like this, struggling to find food. Um, and that that was something that the New Republic was doing regularly. And it really it really leans into the whole duplicitous nature of Brendel and to a degree, the first order themselves, because that's what Brendel preaches. And that's what gets Phasma and those who join Phasma Mm -hmm. to, to save him. And then when he gets back up to his ship, no, he obviously actually does not care about saving these people or saving these planets because he raises the thing to the (laughs) ground. So it's this interesting thing of like the first order is fed this diet of no, these are issues and they are, but the First Order is, g- is going to be the ones who fix it. But in reality, the leadership in the First Order, at least Snoke and Brendel and potentially even Armitage, they're clearly not actually concerned about these issues, the issues that they claim to be concerned about in their propaganda. Um, and so, you know, Phasma just kind of being... She gets to see that firsthand. Like, she believes what Brendel is saying. And yeah, she does get a better life for herself, but the cost of that is that pretty much all the civilized pockets that they meet on their journey on that planet are now destroyed because of her actions. Yeah. Um, Phasma is just interesting in some ways. Cause like we also see her a lot in the Poe Dameron comic. Um, yeah. She seems to on some level care about the first order's mission. Um, when she's representing the first order, she like, she expresses distaste toward Terex and ex Imperial who is working with the First Order because he keeps slaves. And she's just like, this is not what the First Order does. We are not the Empire. Um, And she even kind of, I don't, Phasma's just cool because she'll even talk to Terex and express this distaste and not care about it. Um, And she also notes that like, she's the one talking to Terex because Armitage doesn't want to. (laughs) Like she's the person who gets all the jobs that Armitage doesn't want to. And she's okay with that because Armitage lets her get away with pretty much anything she wants. Um, They just have like an interesting dynamic. I just really think those two characters are just really cool. Um, And that they share a relationship that's interesting that almost reminds me of what Phasma wanted to have with her brother Keldo. Um, from the Phasma novel, because she and Keldo ruled the Skyre collectively, supposedly, but Keldo actually ended up taking a lot of the power for himself. So then when Phasma turns around and tries to make these military maneuvers without Keldo's permission, he gets really upset about it. So now she's in the First Order. Um, She conspires with Armitage to kill his father, Brendel, and he's just like, you know, as long as you can do it without getting caught, I'm fine with it. Go ahead. Um, So she does. Um... They have this just unspoken agreement that she'll do whatever he needs her to do. And in return, he's not going to question her about like anything. 
Um, and he just works for her. Maybe he should. Um, (laughs) But then at the same time, turn off the shields. At the same time, there are some lines within the novelizations that implies like maybe he does kind of know about some of the fishy things she's done, and he's just choosing not to care. Um, Because she gets results at the end of the day. Yeah, because she gets results, Mm -hmm. and that's what she tells Cardinal is just that like, look. And Hux is very much about results. Yeah, that all that really matters is that I get results, and that's what Armitage wants. He doesn't care about the methods. And that's and and the way that Cardinal and um, and Phasma are set up in that book is really interesting. Their conflict is so. I just, I love it. That's one of my favorite things about it is the way Cardinal slowly gets brought around by V. Marathi to the point where, assuming Cardinal actually survived, he potentially could have gone and joined the resistance. I think yeah. it's pretty clear that Phasma's going to hunt them down and yeah. none of those people I don't are going to make they it out survived, alive. But... Um, but, you know, Cardinal, he was used to being the favored son of Brendel, who was this man who lived in complete opulence and hatred for pretty much everyone else besides himself. Um, and so then when Phasma comes along, who is just, you know, kind of Cardinal's superior in every way when it comes to just getting results and being ruthless, you know, Cardinal kind of gets pushed by the wayside. His responsibilities get lessened. Um, Hux, once he asserts himself to power, once Brendel, yeah, once Brendel, uh, dies and Armitage asserts himself to power, um, Cardinal finds himself invited to fewer and fewer of the meetings. <laughs> um, and so... I know how that feels. So his whole thing in the Phasma book, he's like, I'm going to prove that Phasma is no good. I'm going to prove that she does not actually care about the First Order like I do. Um, and yeah, he proves it. And he goes to Armitage and tells him like all the proof. And Armitage is just like, great. Like, are you an idiot? Like, did you think I didn't already know all this? Um, and just kind of sends him out. And then Armitage has a moment where he's just thinking and he's like, you know, should I even tell Phasma? She'll probably figure it out on her own. Like, I don't... Yeah. He's just like, should I tell her to clean this up? And he just kind of decides, like, no. But then by the next morning, clearly, like, they've met up for coffee or something. And he's been like, yeah, you know what? By the way, (laughs) Cardinal... No, I I love when Cardinal tells Hux. He's like, dude, Phasma killed your dad. And he's just like, yeah, I know. I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> I told her to, as long as she could do it without and, getting caught. And Hux is a, an image of a good leader. Yes. A good leader understands, yeah, not everyone under me is going to be a zealot like I am. Yes. A good leader recognizes that No, we even... I'm typically the leader because I am more whatever we need in this position mm-hmm. than the people below me. So yeah, um, they're not as sold out as I am. Okay. I don't really, I want my people to be. But a good leader knows, yeah, most of my people aren't going to be. Yeah. And it's that it's that realistic aspect for him that makes him a good leader. I mean, yeah, there's even that moment of, like, when Cardinal comes forward with all this information, Armitage is kind of like, okay, but could you just not tell other people? Because, like, you're a good soldier, and I don't want to lose you. Like, Armitage pretty much says that. He's just like, you're a good man, and I don't want the first order to have to go without you but like at the same time he already knows that cardinal is too good of a man to like let this slide Mm -hmm. um so he ends up telling phasma um but it's really interesting um you have something um one other thing i I find interesting about phasma is is aesthetically Mm -hmm. her armor let's let's talk about that for a second Crafted from... Crafted apparently from Palpatine's yes. original Naboo... Yeah, it's crafted yacht. from a, a yeah. Naboo yacht. Well, it's because Brendel had commandeered the yacht. Like, essentially, that is Brendel's yacht at this point. Brendel had Although taken Palpatine's we yacht. We have not seen Palpatine actually use that yacht in anything that I've seen. Well, we assume it, it just looks <laughs> like one of the... It looks like, you know, in the beginning of episode two... Yeah, because it's Queen from Amidala Naboo. ...when Queen is flying in on that, like, really shiny... Like, yeah, it essentially looks like that. Because like that's, they're from the right. same planet. It's so. the assumption. Yeah. Well, but but that's the funny and part. It's cool. Nubian fighters, those Nubian aircraft are not made on the planet Naboo. It's like a different company from mm-hmm. a different planet. It's just the people of Naboo have enough money to purchase them. Yes. And it's, it's, it's just one of those odd things. It's like, when I saw the movie, it's like, oh, Nubian. World, uh, galaxy-renowned... For their beauty and craftsmanship, and it's like no, it's it's a it's a ship manufacturer from a completely unrelated planet. It's it's interesting that like you take a Naboo, um, 
you know, a Naboo yacht that is essentially, like you said, you know, the people on Naboo who can afford one of those are extremely wealthy and opulent. So you take this yacht that is essentially a symbol of, of wealth and you craft it into armor and give it on someone who is just this savage, like this ultimate, you know, survivalist who will do anything to get ahead um, in the same way that, you know, someone like Palpatine would have done. Uh, well, but, uh, I mean, it actually, it's, it's kind of a good um, image of Palpatine. Palpatine enrobed himself in beauty and fine, fine yes. the, yeah, and uh, everything that looked good about the universe, but inside, he was a decaying corpse. Yeah. I think that's better said than what I was trying to say. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's just very emblematic of, like, that is what Brindle Hux was doing, essentially. Like, he was directly taking Palpatine's stuff and just admiring, like, the Emperor's lifestyle and taking all of that in when he was just a horrible, terrible person who didn't care a thing about the galaxy. Maybe not even as much as the Emperor did. Um, and then Phasma kind of is the third one to do this. <laughs> like, she's taking it from Brindle because she doesn't even associate it with Palpatine. Um, she just associates it with Brindle. Yeah. Um, so it's kind uh, that, of like that's this what I was wondering of... is why does she care about Palpatine? Because no, she does. Palpatine literally shit. was already dead. Mm -hmm. Was a, in probably in her mind a failure yes. as a leader that let her himself die. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't. I, I was never able to really make that connection. Why does she even care no, about it's this ship? It's even Brendel though it's a great ship story. When she finds it. Right. Because mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. more about the Brendel Association and. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where it's cool because then when you get to Last Jedi and Rose shoots her, and it's like normal stormtrooper armor, it it does its job, but it can definitely be penetrated by a simple uh, blaster pistol. We've just, seen that, and then with well, hers, it just high powered yeah. blaster pistol. Sure, sure, yeah. but but yeah. regardless, with hers, it just it just bounces off and it just ricochets off, and we know it's because. That armor is probably way heavier and stronger than any other stormtrooper's armor that's it's out there. Designed to take actual ship-based laser yes. fire, and she literally never takes it off. Good like, lord! She takes it off like in the privacy of her own room. Does not answer the door without putting it back on. <laughs> like no one in the first order has ever seen her without the helmet, except obviously Cardinal in the Phasma novel. So we know what she looks like. And we've seen her left but eye. Then, Yes, and we've seen her left eye in Last Jedi. And the description of what she looks like in Phasma is just, it's just she looks Gwendolyn like Gwendolyn Christie. Christie. She, just, <laughs> so she just looks like that yeah. mystery's gone. But um, and yeah, she's a. Uh, when we first saw the, you know, let's kind of rewind the clock a little bit. When we're first seeing the Force Awakens pro promos, and we just see, we don't even, you know, it's it's the first or second teaser. We just see this silver stormtrooper with this like badass black cape. Um, we know nothing about her other than she is awesome, and she has an incredible design. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because now we've expanded it, and we've said, you know, she had the all-silver armor, but, you know, we had Cardinal, who was cloaked in all-red armor with a, with a black cape. Um, and then we've had Commander Pyre in Resistance, who's all gold. <laughs> Which is a little off brand, but that's okay. It's a, it's a Can't little... wait for the copper trooper to show. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. and, uh... like you, you oh, got... look, that guy's wearing rose gold. He must be important. <laughs> I wanted all rose gold stormtrooper, but like, yeah. I mean, you see, you see, Phasma all silver, um, Cardinal all red. Which, which, by the way, that that armor got her the uh, character wise. Originally, that was supposed to be Kylo Ren's armor, and then they're yes. like, yeah, too flashy. Yeah. And then when they're like, well, we need a name for the character. Apparently, J.J. Abrams like, that reminds me of the, the balls from Phantasm, so let's call him fa call her Phasma. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and I, I love that little bit of, of, of trivia. It sounded like a good point to interject that. No, it's good. I like that I like that her blaster is silver, too. And I never thought about that until I saw Commander Pyre, and I was like, why is his gun gold also? <laughs> and I go back, I'm like, well, He's yeah, just Phasma's like, like a little protege. Ph Phasma's was also silver. It's just that a silver gun stands out less than a gun that's completely gold-plated, so did, I just never did noticed. Did Cardinal start this fad, or did Phasma well, start Cardinal, this fad? Well, Cardinal was... Cardinal was already in red armor by yeah. the time Phasma's been recruited. I don't know if his blaster's red, because we never see... Would they never talk about his blaster? I hope it's red. Or I hope it was red. <laughs> I don't know. It's becoming a little bit weird with the, the color coordinating... Well, they like thing. it for posters. Like, that's what they talk about in the Phasma novel a lot, is that Phasma is on all of their posters. 
And like Cardinal used to be on them, yeah. but now Fez is on them. It's a secret organization the, the galaxy doesn't believe exists. Well, no, How many in, posters do they no, have? No, well, for in, themselves. In themselves. Like they need. Oh, they in need, the break have, room? Yeah, they have so much propaganda. Like yeah. when they go to sleep. Like, I don't, I think it's in Before the Awakening, not in the Phasma novel, but when, like, stormtroopers go to sleep, they're plugged into propaganda. Like, yeah. it's on all night. Oh, nice. Like, Hux yeah. talking and, like, giving speeches and stuff. Like, that's what they listen to so, all night. So when you go into the stormtrooper break room, there's, like, a sign, like, know your rights, you have none, and Phasma's <laughs> on there. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Stuff like that. Kylo um, Ren is on the you have none poster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, no, one thing I think is, um, oh my gosh, I... I'm completely blanking. I had this, I I was gonna go somewhere. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, one thing that's also cool about Phasma is that she's pretty short spoken in the movies. Like yes. she does not talk a lot. But then when you read Bo- Bo- Boba Fett, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I know. I'm, but but more than that. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Then when you get to the novel and the comic, in both the novel and in both the comic, she gives a speech. Like in the novel, she gives this like. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Gladi- like, straight out of Gladiator in the novel. She gives, like, this big speech because they, they actually... Because the, the, the novel is basically a road trip story, which I love. And it's just them going on this odyssey and they go from place to place and they f- go from danger to danger all to get from point A to point B. And they end up in this, like, gladiatorial combat arena. It's really cool. She gives a speech there. And then in the um, in the comics, she gives a speech, and everyone's chanting like Phasma, Phasma. And so this is a character who she can be as powerful, you know, boisterously. She can she can give these like powerful speeches. She can command an audience. She can command people's attention in the same way that she can, you know, beat the ever living snot out of them. Um, you know, she has these these abilities uh to you know really rile people up she just knows when to employ them and when she doesn't need to be using them so i mean she is a very dangerous person to be let loose in the galaxy (laughs) and i never really thought of her as like the captain america of the first order yeah Um, yeah that's interesting so she goes Mm -hmm. around and she's like buy war bonds to the troops apparently (laughs) well she's like she's the teacher of all the troops like everyone reports to captain phasma she's the one who trains them um, well, once, once they, they get re- through Cardinal's yeah, once initial... They, well, I mean, not anymore. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> now yeah. she trains literally everyone. Now it's, um, it's Radel to Grave. But yeah, for a while, Cardinal was in charge of the children, and then he sent them off to Phasma. And it talks about how like he hated sending them off to Phasma, because they were such like good kids, and he could like understand them and relate to them, and then they'd go to Phasma and be unrecognizable. Now, Finn was like, still traded, trained by Cardinal. Yes. Yeah. So is there that possibility that... like? That maybe Cardinal allowed a weakness in the children. Yes. That allowed for people like Finn to... Oh, sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, for okay. sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. And then Phasma, like, ironed that out and turned them all into monsters, as, like, Cardinal or described Or what them. we viewed original Stormtroopers as. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, Cardinal is... Uh, Cardinal's one of those characters that I know is dead. I really wish he wasn't. Not because it would make the story stronger or anything, but just because I like Cardinal a lot, and I would have liked to have seen... I mean, like, yeah, we we don't officially know he's dead, but I think for the Phasma novel to end the way it does, and for Phasma to be the character she is, we pretty much know he's dead, because there's no way she would have let them go back to that planet without going down to investigate. Because she knew he heard all of that information from someone. And she would have gone, and that's exactly where Vi and Cardinal were heading. We're back to Civ. Um, so yep. it's hard to imagine that they survived that. Like, clearly Phasma doesn't think they did. But so. then again, they could always come out with another comic that, that kind of expands the, the story a little bit and adds a little more time, and yeah. maybe he fakes his death. There, you know, you've got all sorts of options. Maybe he joins the Resistance because, you remember... I mean, that's a very complicated thing to do with this one-off character that I don't think we're going to spend that much time no. on. But yes, it's possible. If you, but I mean, but like I he's, they, he, they created an interesting character. They did. This. And he Cardinal's has a position, great. he has a um, purpose. But I think his purpose is also partially in how tragic of a character he is. Right. And you lose a lot of that. Uh, but at this point, when there's only, there was, what, only like 15, 20 resistance people left alive, if they're going to have to get some First Order people to defect. And I mean, not necessarily. The they can go rally the galaxy itself, too. That's true. That's true. It, but, uh, you know, with the Empire, almost every officer was a former Imperial officer that, in fact, Wedge Antilles and mm-hmm. Crix Medine and 
General Dodonna, the General Riken, they were all former Imperials that defected. Almost the entire hierarchy of the of the Rebel Alliance were former Imperials. And uh, well, maybe we won't see that happen in the First Order. But I just, I've, I've enjoyed Cardinals so far. I haven't read everything with him in it. So well, I mean, he's just in the... It, but he's yeah. been one of the more interesting yeah. First Order people that I've, I've run into so far. He is. And the, the thing with Phasma having this duplicitous nature and, you know, having the mask, it's just, it just further is, you know, contributing to the thematicness. I could have constructed that sentence better. Mm-hmm. Of the First Order, you know, the way that Kylo treats his mask, the way the First Order dresses itself like the Empire. You know, there's a lot in the First Order that has to do with masks and how we present ourselves versus what we yeah, actually are. Yeah, there's a are. whole, like, several paragraphs about it in the Force Awakens novelization. Yeah. Um, it talks about, like, Kylo Ren has his mask and Captain Phasma has her mask and Armitage Hux's face is his mask. Like, the fact... Because before Last Jedi, Hux didn't really emote. Um, so they changed that in Last Jedi, so I don't really know how that stands he anymore. Was going for a rough that's one day. of my thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, guess by the that's end of Last Jedi, it. he's pretty much he's at pretty his much back. Self. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Last Jedi throws it off a lot. But, yeah, his, what do you yeah. mean he was back to himself by the end? Uh, well, he no, was because, knocked out. He no, was, he wasn't. No, he in the in the up. in the opening scene of Last Jedi, he's he's emoting way more than we've ever seen him. Right. And then in the battle for Crait, when he's on the ship with Kylo. Um, and he's, you know, he's much like, more do back you, to do controlling you think you himself. got him and stuff like that? Just like, yeah, this is, this is the Hux we saw in Force Awakens. Yeah. The right. Hux in the beginning of that movie is just not really the Hux we saw in yeah, Force Awakens. Yeah, so I guess you can explain it away by being like he was sleep deprived or something, but he's very clearly just a different character kind of at the beginning right. of that. He like that's one of my Star Killer base. Few, just yeah, lost like Snow. you can explain it away like that. It still kind of bothers me, but it's whatever. You can explain it by... A lot of different ways. But he hasn't slept. Kylo's lost, has lost his mask at that point in the movie. Uh, right after that. In the yeah, movie not as yet. Well. But he will. Uh, Phasma loses his little chunk. Yeah, right I mean that, that's <laughs> everyone's I mean, kind of coming yeah, unmasked. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's Luke. Okay. Is, yeah, that's cool. Luke that's interesting. Has kind of come unmasked too because yeah. he does yeah. have a I don't care about anything in the galaxy mask going on, and then. I mean, yeah, he's just kind of shrouded in mystery in Force Awakens, and then he becomes not a mystery, but not at all the person that they thought he was. Yeah. And then comes out and is the person we thought he was. But that's a whole other so discussion. To, but with Phasma, so do you, at, on any level, Carly, mm-hmm. do you want her to have survived Last Jedi and tell more stories with her like we did with Boba Fett? Like, we don't touch on her again in the movies. She just somehow survives, and because it's Star Wars, she could survive. You know, do you want that? And if she does survive, what is the story you want to see? You you, you, you want to see her go off and become some kind of yes. pirate queen of I the underworld? I don't really want her to survive if she's going to have anything to do with the First Order. Yeah, I um, kind of agree with that. Because I honestly feel like they haven't done much with her with the First Order, like, in the movies anyway. And I don't want her back in Episode Nine. Like, it's just going to be another thing to distract us from everything else we need to cover in Episode Nine. Agreed. Um... But, I mean, if she comes back, it won't be the end of the world. Maybe we still won't spend time on her. But I don't want to see it personally. If she does survive, um, I think the Poe Dameron comic sets up a lot of, like, implants and stuff that they can do to kind of keep people going. And, I mean, General Grievous is already an example of that. Um, So I'd like to see her just kind of land on some planet somewhere and wreak havoc. (laughs) Yeah, she could become the very, like... Because she kind of presented herself as almost this massive force could, of nature, yeah. practically a machine. So she could get recovered and then literally become mostly machine. Ooh. And that could be potentially interesting. But I agree, I don't... She could become Grievous 2.0. I mean, like, I think a lot of this is her... Like, when Brindle Hux first shows up, like, it makes it very clear that the people on the sky are kind of speak with a different dialect. We don't know what it sounds like, but it's not the imperial dignified accent. Um, when which is Brindle British. Hux shows, you know, which is British, but when Brindle shows up, she starts like enunciating words like he does. She learns to speak like him and starts pretending basically to be someone she's not. So I think it would be great to see her kind of degenerate, like back to the savage that she actually is because she's worked so hard to build this life for her that is so different than what she is at her core. No, I agree. If, if I had it like just my own perfect way, I would say she potentially survives and then she becomes some sort of like 
pirate queen or some sort of leader of marauders or something like that. Like, I, I think that would be really cool to see. Um, I agree in just that we have a lot to tackle in episode nine. We have a lot of new characters coming in. Um, and, you know, we don't necessarily... Because I seem to recall in the lead up to Last Jedi being told that Phasma was going to actually, we were going to do something with Phasma. And then yes, we Phasma were told had, that we would get a lot more Phasma than we got in Force Awakens. And, she, and she, then we did She didn't. was supposed to be, during when she was originally announced in trailers and things, all of us yes. were viewing it as, oh, she's going to be a female Darth Vader type of character. You I mean, know, I that, don't remember ever thinking that. No, me neither. But, but, well, but, it, it was the old fan voice who were thinking <laughs> that. And we were okay with it. Because she was only the second female villain in Star Wars. The first being Sam yeah. Wexel. Sam Wazell. Or, yeah, whatever. No, no, Sam Wazell? I thought it was Wexel. No. No, Wes, it's Wazell. Wazell? Okay. Wessel. It's like Weasel, but not. Oh, that's right. That's it. <laughs> okay. But the, the bounty hunter there. That was, she's only the second one. I mean, I guess you could say the third if you view one of the, the clone makers as one of the... I mean, characters. Ventress, if you count her. Yeah, which, that's the TV show. But that's the TV show. I think shows. we were talking about the movies. Oh, well, the sure, movies. sure. But you're right. But my point was that I seem to recall us saying that we were going to do more with Phasma in Last Jedi, and then she actually has less screen time in Last Jedi than she does in Force Awakens. More so. cutscenes. Yeah. But, like, my point is that if we're not going to do anything with her in the movies, let's just let her be killed off as far as the movies are concerned and mm -hmm. continue to... Because what we've learned about her backstory and that short miniseries that we got in the comics... I want to know more about this character. I want to see more done with this character. I love her. So, I mean, if she survives, I kind of want to see her go off and do her own thing. Um, but I mean, let, let Phasma die. Kill her if we have to. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I ideally would have liked to have maybe given Phasma a little bit more to do in the first place. Because I like Phasma. And, yeah, you're right. It would have been cool to get more female villains in Star yeah. Wars proper. I mean, I love how much we at least see her in the Poe Dameron series in Resistance. Like, she's kind of the stand-in for, like... Maybe if Hux is going to be an important player, they don't want us to see a lot of Armitage. Um, so we see a lot of Phasma in, like, extra stuff because she's not as important. So, like, what she's doing doesn't necessarily directly impact everything else that's going on. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I think we're, we're right at around 45 minutes, so I think that might be a good place to call it unless anyone has any last-minute things they want to say about everyone's favorite First Order captain. Um, if you've played Battlefront game, her, her, her staff strike thing is impossible. I can't hit anyone with that. <laughs> um, yes, there's a reason I've only leveled her up to five. Uh, she's just not... Do you... If EA, if you're listening, you need to rebalance Phasma. <laughs> Come on. EA, Come on. if you're listening, give... Just stop. Just stop. But, um... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If EA, EA, you are permanently banned from listening to this channel. No. No, Cease if, and desist. If, if EA no, is... If someone in EA is listening to me, that's the last thing I'm gonna tell them. I'm just gonna tell them to stop. But, um... Yeah, actually, no, that is something I wanted to... You just reminded me. When she's fighting Finn, we get her theme. Yes. Uh, Chrome Dome, right? Yes. It's a pretty cool theme. It's very percussive, which makes sense because she comes from this, like kind of wasteland like yeah. group of savages for lack of a better word so it's this percussive tribal like thing i wish we got a little bit more of it but it's it's pretty cool uh, uh, since the new movies have come out it feels like on the older movies the themes were much more understated maybe i think I more oh, like the luke and leia theme is just obvious like yeah. the leia theme is completely obvious the han theme Oh, okay, no, I see what you're saying. And yeah. in the newer movies, it's like, almost, it feels like generalized Star Wars sounds, but then when I find, listen to the CD, I can hear it fine. I'm not sure if it's the way they're editing the, the music I think into that, the film. I think that was truer, I, think, I, think, I don't think that's, that's true. truer in Last Jedi than it is in yeah. Force Awakens. Like, in Force Awakens, I definitely hear Ray's Kylo's theme. and Rey's. Kylo's like, were, those were are great. super strong. And then the Resistance theme that I associate with Poe, even though it's not really his theme. Oh, March of the Resistance. Yeah, um... But with Phasma's, she's, like, the one, like, for most of Last Jedi, I really don't hear or care about any of the music going on. Like, it doesn't feel important. Um, Phasma's, I did hear. Like, Phasma was the one theme I remember from The Last Jedi, consistently. Yeah, yeah I agree. I we, think we will have to do an entire video on the soundtracks of Star Wars. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's absolutely a great place to, to go. But what I'd like to see this week, if you guys can, put it in the comments. Phasma. Live or die. 
<laughs> what do you, what do you want to see? Do you think that was a, a good end for Phasma, or do you think she needs a continuation? Maybe not in the movies. Maybe as you know, pirate queen of. I don't know Dara why I'm Rim. so fixated. I don't know why I'm so fixated on that specifically, but maybe her and Hondo get together. I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, the I only swear. pirate queen this is Hondo multi shipper. Yeah. I've been playing a I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey and there's a there's a pirate queen in Assassin's Creed Odyssey who kind of reminds me of Phasma. She's like massive and huge and, and wears all this armor. And so I don't know, maybe that's maybe that's why you're going on in my head, but I and, like uh, Fantasy Flight Games also makes um for their RPGs make standalone like like books for campaigns. One of them is The Pirate Queen. Yeah. Oh, you know, that reminds me, uh, we do, um, we do tabletop, you know, uh, Carly and I have done Pathfinder for a long time and D&D and you do, and we've, uh, we've played some of the old out of print, uh, Star Wars role playing game, mm -hmm. but the current Star Wars role playing game actually has this like adventure set. I, I don't know what it's called, but it's like this Star Wars role playing game beginner set. And it's like a, a pre made mini campaign that takes place on Jakku um, and you play as, like, different people oh, who all the, meet up on Jakku. And Phasma's kind of the main yeah. antagonist in that little mm -hmm. adventure, um, where you, you start on Jakku, you then, uh, you salvage this thing from this ship, and then you, uh, you leave, and then you get intercepted by the First Order, and you have to deal with Phasma. Um, so, like, Phasma, again, continues to be used a lot yeah, that's outside one of their of because she's really easy three to market. starter sets. Um, yeah. They had a one for Age of Rebellion. Oh, sorry, four starter sets. They had an Age of Rebellion, um, Empire, whatever the Edge, Edge of, of Empire, Empire. Yeah. and then finally the the Force and Destiny one. And then they also had the Resistance one. Uh, but I, they didn't come out with any books that were specific to that Resistance one. But the idea was that's how you learn the basics of the game, and then you go find one of the core books of yeah. the one you wanted to focus on. So, I mean, that's a really fun little adventure story. It's got Phasma in it. I mean, it, it's not really, like, a story, but, like, you follow the campaign and, you know, you obviously be the characters. But um, Maybe one day we could, like, play it on the channel or something. That, way down the road. But well, let us know in the comments if you would <laughs> want to listen to that. Yeah, the, the point I'm just making is that Phasma is interesting because, again, when you look at her in the movies, she doesn't do a lot, but, man, she's really easy to market because, I mean... That design is fantastic. So she's really easy to market. Um, what we do know of her is great in the movies. Mm -hmm. You know, she's cool. She, she does what she needs to. And then as soon as you step outside the movies, you find out that she's really, really interesting. So um, I was kind of sad they never quite got to bring that to the movies. But if Phasma just ends up being like Legends Boba Fett, just a character who's mostly interesting outside the films, um, I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly okay with that. Yeah, and it worked for Boba Fett. And the, the funny part is, even to this day, if someone does a parody show, what do they do with Boba Fett? They have him crying about the fact that he went down like a punk into the Sarlacc pit. Like, just some random blind guy hit the button on his jetpack and threw him into a pit. And yeah, he, I mean, Phasma just got cheap shot by, by Finn, because she got distracted, and then Finn just came up and smacked her across the face. Yeah, I mean, it, it's rough. No, she would have never gone down in a fair fight. Yeah, that's true. In a fair fight, she was cleaning. She was she was cleaning up. I'm not sure. Has Phasma like, ever been in a fair fight? Well, well, in the, well. <laughs> I mean, she's... that just depends on what you mean by fair. But yes, I mean, like in every fight that she has ever fought, like just her versus someone else, she wins. I feel yeah, like having it's a, a, yeah. it's a generalized fair fight. But almost <laughs> everything in the book, there was some part of it where she fought dirty. Is it? Is or, it... or there was some like aspect where it wasn't supposed to be a fight, or she poisoned the person. Or there was something that let her win that was kind of not on the level, but still all's fair in love and war. Is it ever situation. is it ever a fair fight when you're going up against a giant? <laughs> is that ever fair? <laughs> I mean, true. but like she takes down Card in that final fight with Cardinal. Has Cardinal been like drugged or anything? No, that is a perfectly fair fight. Cardinal just sucks compared to Phasma. Yeah, no, Phasma just Phasma's just a beast. Yeah, she is, she's and she's awesome. a, she uses that like the like pike weapon. She uses just that electro staff, or not really electro staff, but like the force pike. Um, oh, it's not even a force pike. It's just. A, I mean, it's, it's also just a situation. A stick, like, but it's perfect because it it it, it allows her to be. Mm -hmm. She's just good. It's, it's yes. like Terracasi. It's it's whatever. Um, it's not how good her weaponry is. It's because she's that good. Mm -hmm. Dude, so like, she might be dead now, so it doesn't matter. But like, 
and and you and I have talked about this before, Carly, but like a Phasma v Kylo Ren fight. I think Phasma would win, yeah. honestly. <laughs> I do. Think- like using one of those um like the riot batons that can fight against lightsabers, like I don't I don't like Ooh, unless Kylo be- starts using the force or something. Like if it's just Kylo's a fair unhinged. fight between the two of them. Like, where he's not using, like, extra force powers or anything. Like, which, I think which, Phasma Which wins. easily could happen, because Kylo's kind of a brawler. Like, he's not the most strategic yeah. fighter. He just kind of goes in mostly relying on his size and his the strength of his arms and his weapon to kind of carry him. That's just how he fights. Like Maul versus Obi-Wan in their first fight. Yeah, they're Maul both very... was too far forward, too furious, yeah. too energetic, like, just going into it thinking he can't lose, while Obi-Wan, well, yes, he was having some... A moment there but he was still disciplined still doing yeah you know I think, that's the thing i think phasma phasma's has, discipline phasma has the skill yeah the, the raw disciplined skill to turn the fight against i kylo. mean i'll grant you i don't think that fight would ever happen kylo seems to respect phasma i don't know that he'd want to fight phasma. i don't i don't know anyone I think, who would want like to. i feel like he would personally doubt his own ability to fight phasma um in like the last jedi novelization he like there's like there's a line that just kind of says that he respects phasma as a person and he's just you know kind of like they haven't heard about her after like the thing so if she's dead then that would be sad but yeah phasma's great i like phasma that was pretty much the whole reason we had this conversation is because phasma's cool yeah and she is she's she'll stick around uh, she'll definitely be in a lot of I hope so. Expanded information. I hope so. Uh, yeah. The only real question is, what does she live? Does she die? Yeah, is she going to be in, that... in anything that, that takes place after Last Jedi? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, by the way, I mean, she could be extremely injured at the bottom of that, and she does have the same similar backstory to, to Grievous in that she is, like, a warrior. Yeah, I mean, Grievous was, like, a... Well, is that canon anymore? Do we know? Have we touched on Grievous's backstory in current canon? Because I thought that was done in a comic. Ah, where he I mean, was like a, a where he was like a Kalish warlord, I thought that was all in a comic. Ah, but the statues of him as a Kalish warlord still still are, okay. are can, and because in his um, in his little his H R Giger lair. Yeah, the okay. H R. Do you say Giger or Geiger? Uh, I just said Giger. You, yeah, I say Geiger. <laughs> That's fine. But do you call it a Giger counter? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're off top. Right, thank you so. Much. This, uh, this has been a fun episode. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, let us know in the comments whatever we've already tell, told you to let us know in the comments, but also just tell us what you think about Phasma. Do you like her? Do you not? That's okay. Tell us. Uh, and once again, I'm Matt. I am Carly. And I am Rob. And we will, uh, we'll see you guys, and we'll see, we'll see you guys again next time. <laughs> we'll see you all again next time. Through the wonders of the internet. Bye.